Hey friends, welcome to Aromatic Chat, the podcast that introduces you to registered, clinical, and certified aromatherapists around the world. Every other week, I sit down with a different aromatherapist to learn about their aromatic journey and how they use aromatherapy in their lives and their businesses. Aromatic Chat is produced by Lemon Balm Coaching, and I'm your host, Melissa, your master transformational coach and registered aromatherapist. Welcome to podcast episode number 61, Aromatic Chat with David Kropp. I am friends with David through our Professional Aromatherapy Association, the Alliance of International Aromatherapists. I had the honor of briefly chatting with him on the special AIA conference episode last year, and I'm so excited to be able to sit down with him for a full-length episode today. David lives in upstate New York and is bringing aromatherapy to his community in a fun way. I hope you enjoy getting to know David as much as I have. So let's get started. David, I'm so glad to have you back on Aromatic Chat. I got to speak with you at the AIA conference. Was that just last year? Yeah, last yeah. year yeah. Um, when we did the special AIA episode. And welcome back. What have you been up to since I talked to you last? Um, thank you so much for having me. Just, you know, trying to develop my product line, getting the word out there on what I'm doing uh, with aromatherapy. I've actually gotten my products into a couple local um, stores. So that's been cool. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I remember t- when we talked back in the conference, you were saying it's kind of difficult to get people to really connect with aromatherapy where you live. Yes. And I find the hard part is hard part, but easy part for me is the, just when I'm doing a show, just teaching people the education. And I spend, you know, almost sometimes the whole show more talking to people about it than actually selling the product sometimes. So (laughs) um, it's, you know, it's tough because in our area, I do feel that people want the quick fix. Give me something in. I want to go. So that's the hard part with my area. A lot of people didn't want to do the one-on-one consultations and that type of thing. So in the beginning, mm-hmm. I was trying to do that. And people were like, oh, can you just give me something to, to smell for, for stress? So that's how I kind of moved into doing the vendor shows, farmers markets, craft shows, that type of thing. Nice. Um, because people in this area just wanted to go shopping and pick up something. So I know you're in New York. Are things like kind of open now after uh, our last two and a half years of Rona? Are you able to do craft shows again? Yes. Oh, yep. beautiful. Yeah. So craft shows and all that stuff is all fully open. A lot of, you know, for a while it was completely shut down. When things started opening up, I did have to travel like an hour and a half, two hours to bigger cities to Um, start doing shows again. So it took a little while for our area to actually open up compared to the rest of New York. Well, at least you're able to do it now. Yeah. That's really exciting. Now I know that aromatherapy is kind of your side gig. Kind of. Okay. So let's wait on that. Let's wait on that. Okay. We'll wait on that. Okay. Yeah. Let's wait on that. And um, (laughs) let's start with the question I always start with, with everybody is just tell us about your aromatic journey, how you ended up here, New York doing aromatherapy and uh, I'm, a, I'm assuming getting ready to turn it into your primary gig. I was a baker. I grew up as a baker and that's what I wanted to do. So I worked my way up to the point where I was, you know, managing a bakery. Um, but it got to the point where I was literally just doing all of the paperwork, all of the payroll, all of that stuff. I wasn't managing. actually doing yeah. the work that I actually loved doing. Um, And I didn't realize that until talking to a student about her career and stuff like that. I ended up working too many hours and I was working six days a week, you know, 16 hour days. And I created a lot of health issues for myself. Mm -hmm. It first started off with IBS, dealt with that for about two years. And then the big wake up call was um, my doctor thought I was having heart failure in his office. And at 34, thinking I have my dream job, that is not something you really want to hear in general. So it was a big turnaround and thank God it, it literally was all stress. I had two nervous breakdowns. Finally, I was like, enough is enough. I told my bosses, I'm taking the summer off. I'm taking a vacation. I'm leaving. I'll let you know when I'm coming back type thing. Within two weeks, I had no issues. 
all of my stomach issues with the IBS gone. My wife turned to me and she was like, you are a different person than two weeks ago. That was a big wake up call for me. Like, and so in that time frame, I was using a lot of teas, a lot of herbal remedies. Um, friend of mine introduced me to the essential oil. So I was doing all of that with the amount of stress that I was under. It wasn't quite enough, to be honest with you. I took, I took like a month and a half off and it was, it was amazing how I felt. Went back to work within two days, everything is back. Mm. All of my symptoms, everything. I worked that semester and then I actually stepped down from my position, ended up still doing all of the work, still doing all of the stuff. It was to the point where mentally, physically, I just, I couldn't do it anymore. So basically we sat down with my wife and we were like, okay, how can we make this work? What can we do? I had already started the aromatherapy program, but with everything going on, I couldn't do a whole lot. If I leave this job, where does that put our budget? My wife does, she's the math person. She does payroll and bookkeeping. So she had all the numbers figured out. And she was like, well, if you do this, we've lived on less before, <laughs> you know? So that was kind of her thing was, you know, yeah, um, your health is more important. And I remember thinking to myself in 10 years, I won't be around if I stay like this. Right. Wow. Um, and we're going on almost seven years and not one day has gone by that we've looked back and said, this was not the right decision. I love um, that. So I went back and visited the bakery a month after I had left completely just to talk to people, you know, see how things were going. I mean, I was there for almost for 10 years. As soon as I walked in the aromas, the noise, I couldn't handle it anymore. It was just all these feelings kept on coming back. Mm. And it was kind of like one of those, like, wow, scent and emotions all, all connected. It's weird how things hit you like that. There's, there's one restaurant that I could go to when I was sick and not get sick at. I, I could eat their food and it didn't bother me. Four years ago, we went there and I start eating it. And I had that feeling of, is this going to bother me? Oh, wait, no, I, I'm. I'm not having issues right now, but just like years later, all of that was like the mm -hmm. memory and stuff. It's a, still sometimes blows my mind on how yeah. it works. <laughs> yeah. The body, the way our bodies connect React to it. Yeah. with our emotions and our olfactory sense and our sense of hearing, like all of those things were triggers for you to go oh, right back to where you were. Completely. Wow. Completely. I was, I was having, I was at a show one time. I was talking to some of my customers and they asked about something. I was like, oh, I designed their whole um, menu. And as I'm talking to them about me designing the whole menu to the place that she liked to eat at, I started tearing up and she's like looking at me like I'm weird. And sometimes I am. I had to pause for a second because I'm literally tearing up. And I said, you know, I had to pause. I said, I'm so sorry. I said, you know, doing that restaurant was one of my nervous breakdowns mm. and talking about it was just, again, bringing all the emotions back to it. Definitely affected me. I can talk about it, but it definitely, we're in a good place now. Yeah. But isn't it, I mean, it's just amazing how our body remembers things. We think intellectually, right? Intellectually, I'm over it. I've, I've done oh, it. I've done the work. I've got, I've gone to counseling. I've done all the things. And then something happens and our body immediately goes back. I wasn't even thinking of any of that, but just the fact of talking about it and the process, yep. my body reacted before my brain did. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. That's what I'm saying. Like our bodies just, they know, they remember the things we, we think we've overcome them intellectually, right. but our body says, mm, I remember yeah. that. I remember the connection between your emotions and what it did to me. Yeah. 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 Wow. That's an amazing story. Yeah. So that's kind of how my journey started. I started using the essential oils for like my own stuff. The frustrating part with the internet is 
I started using essential oils for myself. And I, then I would have people be like, oh, you use oils. What can I use this? What can I do for this? What can I use for that? I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. So the more <laughs> research I started doing in the beginning, I started finding one issue. You have a hundred different people telling you a hundred different things. The more research I did, I then found five people over here that said the same thing. Mm. And the more I started looking at, okay, why are these people saying the same thing, but these hundred are saying something completely Mm -hmm. different. Mm -hmm. And every single time I went down that hole, they were all certified aromatherapists that were saying the same thing, how to do something safely, how to, you know, what is it for? So that got my mind, like, wait, what is a certified aromatherapist? What do they do? That got my mind thinking of being, okay, I want to start following these people over here that are all saying the same thing instead of just one out of these hundred, you know, and I, w- I started out, with just wanted to do it for my own, wanted to learn more. Um, I found it very interesting. So that's originally why I signed up for the certification program was just to, to learn more about it, right. um, the oils and stuff like that. I had no plans to be where I'm at now. Yeah. <laughs> Do you remember who some of the 10 were? So Tisserand was definitely one. Hey friends, we'll get back to this episode with David Crop in just a minute. I wanted to let you guys know that this is my birthday month and I want to celebrate with you, my listener. As you know, if you've been listening to the podcast for a while, or maybe you just heard it for the first time today, I am a master transformational life coach. Well, what does that mean? I help people who have stuffed their emotions so far down that they can't feel anymore. I help them connect with their body so they can begin to feel again. I help them feel safe inside their emotions, and then I help them lean in and trust their new experience. And for the month of November 2022, I am offering my listeners a podcast incentive of two additional coaching sessions, a $560 value, when you sign up for my transformational program. Inside this coaching container, we figure out what it is that you want in your life, what is standing in your way, and then we work together to overcome those challenges so that you can have and live the life of your dreams. The first step to securing these extra two sessions is to schedule your complimentary discovery call. Head over to lemonbalmcoaching.com and enter the word podcast into the comments box to secure your extra coaching sessions when you sign up for my transformational program. That's lemonbalmcoaching.com to schedule your complimentary discovery call. Now, back to the show. Do you remember who some of the 10 were? So Tisserand was definitely one. Some of the schools. Mm -hmm. So Andrew Bouget, um, Liz Fulcher, um, seeing some of the schools and stuff like that. Gabriel Moje was a a big one. And then it was people under them that, you know, were also sharing. And isn't the internet a beautiful tool? I mean, there's so many bad things that can happen on the internet. We all know that. But for what we do, yeah. With our community being the size that it is to us, it feels big, right? Because there's so many of us, but in the grand scheme of the world, it's a very small community <laughs> and the internet. I mean, really, it just makes it possible for us to connect and find these right. people. Like I think of uh, some of our vintage aromatherapists, right? Like Marge Clark and Linda Ann yeah. Kahn, who became aromatherapists long before the internet was even a dream, right? <laughs> I mean, it may have been a dream, but it wasn't and it didn't exist. And yet they were still able to do it. They were tenacious enough to find the information, you know, without the access of the internet. Right. Or the knowledge that we have now, like, Oh my gosh, we have the knowledge because of them. So that's why. Exactly. (laughs) Yes. Oh my gosh. Yes. Oh, so you're, are you mostly creating products now or are you doing the consultations? Consultations really aren't that, that many. Mm -hmm. Um, And if I say that, I say maybe one or two a year. So it really is right now, just, just the products. I'm at a good point where my product line is, is, is good. It's set. I was talking to a lady and her son has autism. So Mm -hmm. she doesn't know like what scent would he like to help calm him down? So that's where I was like, okay, well, let's set up a time and, you know, I'll meet with him. I'll talk to him, you know, and we'll do it that way. Right, um, right. So that's kind of how I do it now, where if people 
you know, like that type of thing. Right. And what's the name of your product line? Oh, Essentials by DK is Essentials my business by name. DK. Awesome. Yeah. And is it crop. most, <laughs> is it mostly available? Like, like you said, at the farmer's markets and shows, or do you have an online store also? <laughs> I have an online store, but it is something I, that's one thing that I did work on during COVID was taking all pictures of my products and stuff like that. Um, so I do have, I do have a website with a store on it and people can, you know, order off of that. Okay. And what type of products are you making? Because there's so many different ways to use essential oils. Um, what's, what's kind of your thing? I, I do a lot of inhalers. Yeah. The nasal inhalers, uh, sometimes, sometimes called sniffy sticks. Yeah. 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 So I do a lot of them and, um, roll-ons. So those are kind of like the main two things that I end up doing. I do have some jewelry that people then can put the jewelry on, Mm -hmm. you know, and then as they're wearing it. So from there, I have some things that I have as an inhaler, a roll on, and I do a signature blend Beautiful um, for some of the product that people like. Very nice. Um, Very nice. We're still pretty fast paced, even though over the last few years, things were different. I think we're gearing back up and people are getting back to their lives. Those in the, in the inhalers or sniffy sticks and the roll-ons are so good because you can stick right. them in your pocket, throw them in your purse, take them with you wherever you go. And you always have it. And unlike yeah. like a salve that you would want to keep at home. You know? <laughs> so, yeah. So that's really great. Good yeah. for you. Um, yeah. And our, our weather is tough here. So, you know, for around Christmas time, I will do lotion bars, mm-hmm. you know, so I'm not going to carry them when I'm doing out outside shows. So there are some specialty <laughs> yeah. things that I do once in a while. And then I do have a, you know, I do have some essential oils that I use for my product that I do sell as single also. Beautiful. And then um, like the lotion bars, those are becoming so popular now because yeah. of our green movement, right? People don't want the extra packaging. We don't want to, you know, <laughs> squirt something onto our hands and you know, you can just take that lotion bar and just rub it on. That's awesome. That's really great. So how have you found baking translated over to essential oils? Cause I can see it in my head. Oh, it's, it's totally just the making the product Yeah, is what I love with it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so, you know, the mixing, the blending and that type of thing. So, you know, instead of mixing flavors that you're eating, I'm mixing scents and aromas that you're going to smell. So it's different, but still all the same. Yeah. Well, and, and baking is chemistry. Yep. It's all about how, how the, how everything mixes together and creates a thing and aromatherapy. And And, yep. And with that, all, all the safety protocols for, you know, keeping a clean kitchen, all that stuff Mm -hmm. is all, you know, still all the same because Mm -hmm. you can't touch a food that's ready to go. (laughs) Right. Right. So, oh, that's beautiful. Yep. Wow. That's exciting. So back at the AIA conference, we actually had talked about going back and forth, talking about the talk that Laura Cantelli yep. did and uh, mm-hmm. working with kids with special needs. And is that one of your niches as well? The special needs group? I don't know if I would quite say that, like that conversation that I had with that lady was, isn't like all the time. Okay. Um, I think the biggest thing that people come to me about is stress and anxiety. So I guess that falls under every category. Right. But I would say you are probably the perfect person for people to come to about stress since you have lived through it and ended up at the bottom of the the valley of stress. Yeah. And that's where a lot of people read my story and they're like, holy cow, I'm going through that. So that's where if, if I'm able to help them, it is, it's phenomenal. Do you share your story pretty openly and honestly? And is it like oh, something yeah. on your website and people can see? Yep. I'm the stress guy. I'm the guy. Yep. To come oh, to absolutely. My whole, I have a <laughs> short version of my story and then I have a long version of my story because, you know, I do want to share it. I do want to get it out there because if I can help somebody, then that's the, you know, the way I want to do it. And when is your TED talk? Just planting a little bug there. <laughs> Just, you know, throwing it out there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so how can people find you uh, and what you're doing with inhalers? I can't think today. 
<laughs> How can people find you and what you're doing with your inhalers and roller balls and lotion bars? So my website is essentialsbydk.com. Um, and then I'm also on Facebook with Essentials by DK and Instagram also. Okay. Um, if they're local, you know, to upstate New York, Oneonta area, then, you know, look me up for a show and come see me live. Awesome. <laughs> Do you list the shows that you're going to on your website? I try to. <laughs> it's so hard when you're just the, the person, right? It's just one person. You have to do it all. It's hard to remember to do things. <laughs> it is. It is. Um, so I try to, yes. We've already know, so established that the paperwork is not the thing you really want to do. It's the creating. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Your body says no to that stuff. Exactly. Oh, Which is where my wife is like, you, you don't have a description for that on your website. I said, I know. <laughs> We're getting there. <laughs> One step at a time. One step at a time. Awesome. So what are you working on right now that's got you really excited? So when COVID first opened up, I was going to bigger shows. Mm -hmm. But I was talking to vendors that I was doing shows with down here. And they were like, ah, oh, I wish I wish I could go to a bigger show. Um, but right now I just don't feel comfortable. But, you know, I still had to make maple syrup this year, but I just I don't have a way to sell it. I would, you know, I'm still making my products because, you know, woodworker, because he, that's what he's doing to keep himself going. Right. And right. so the more and more I started hearing all these people saying that I said, what if everyone just give me your product and we put together a gift box. So I created what I call the artisan box oh. and I've expanded beyond my area. And I mean, I actually, I've, met a tea company in Alaska when I was visiting family. And so I actually got some of their tea, brought that into New York and it's all local handcrafted handmade stuff that I'm now putting into these gift boxes called the artisan box. And I'm trying to sell them also to help more people, more local families. Wow. Okay. How do people get the artisan box? Online is the best way right now um, because then you then I can ship them. Mm -hmm. um, so just the then, essentials by DK, the artisan yep. box. Yeah. So I have um, on I have a link up there for you know the artisan box and they're right now I'm doing a large and a small product is different based on what I have on hand from the vendor. That's kind of what I'm trying to get going right now, helping other people out. That's um, awesome. That's so awesome. It, it, yeah. It, is it like a membership, monthly membership thing, or is it like a one-off? Like, I just want to get a nice gift for someone. Right now, that's what it is. Just a uh, one time, get a gift. Um, haven't quite totally worked out the kinks on if we want to do a monthly box or quarterly box. I've tried doing, you know, special like Mother's Day, Father's Day, you know, that type of thing. I'll right. come out with a special box like that. But for the most part, it's just a one time um, people... So for my own personal information, is there maple syrup in these boxes? Like real honest to goodness maple syrup? <laughs> can I ship to Guam? And, hey, that... if, if you can send it in a USPS postage, like the um, the flat rate boxes. Yeah. It gets here in about 10 days. 10 days. All right. So as long as it doesn't require refrigeration. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, we have, we have phenomenal make maple syrup in our area. <laughs> Cause I grew up in New York. Right. So I miss like real maple syrup. Everything is that, you know, corn yeah. syrup with maple flavoring in it. So, right. <laughs> right. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Essentials by DK, everyone. Essentials by DK, the artisan box. That's yep. amazing. That's yeah. really amazing, David. Yeah. I love that. I love um, the passion to help other people, which is right. what aromatherapists do anyway but taking it, it to the next step. That's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. And then along those same lines, I've had a lot of vendors, same thing saying, we need more craft shows. We need more vendor shows where we can right. sell. So I've been trying to work with other organizations and other groups, our local mall to just do more craft shows. Right. Where right. people can sell. And then, and then it gets the word out that people, oh, this is local to us. 
you know, I never knew so-and-so was here. And, you know, you find a new maple syrup person. <laughs> right. So I'm curious okay. if there is enough time for people to order artisan boxes as Christmas gifts. Yes. Or holiday gifts. Cause you know, not everybody yeah. celebrates Christmas. Um, yes. So I believe last year, the cutoff point was December 12th or 13th. Okay. And then what I did, I made these stickers after that, that had some sort of joke to it that said, oops, I forgot to order this in time. We hope it makes it to you. So right. I was putting those on the boxes. <laughs> right. Awesome. So if people were to order by mid-December, oh, as long as it's domestic U.S. shipping, yeah. they would get by Christmas. Yep. Wicked. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Um, right. And then I am finding out what our favorites are, getting feedback of, oh my goodness, this is phenomenal in this box. So that's where we're creating our, our own, what people like. That's very um, exciting. That's very yeah. exciting. Oh, so cool. Yeah. Um, so you've had a pretty amazing journey getting to where you are, doing all the shows, doing this new artisan box. So cool. Uh, how would you anticipate, and I know this is a crazy question because how can we even know, but as business owners, we're always kind of looking ahead. What's the next thing? What's coming up? How do you anticipate your practice changing as you move forward? I, I would say changing hopefully for the best. Um, as be, and yes, everyone says that, but I do think because we're in an area where people want the one quick fix thing, just the more I talk, the more I get people using products, switching to natural stuff in general, the more people start hearing about that. I think they're going to start naturally switching mm -hmm. to more healthier alternatives. And I think we're going to start seeing that as a switch beautiful in the in the future and a lot of it i think it's just education and letting people know what's out there and how to use it correctly and stuff like that right and every every small change <clears throat> for the better yeah is 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 good you know i think everybody thinks they have to change everything all at once and that's not true if right. we can remove one thing from our diet and add one good thing you know that's right. a good start if we can remove one nasty chemical or situation, stressful situation yeah. from yep. our life that much yep. better. Yeah. And back into one of your questions too, same thing with that. I have a joint and muscle roll on. People will say, I've got arthritis in my hands. I've tried everything. It just doesn't work. So I'll give them a little sample of it. They'll roll it on their joint. And within five minutes, they're back and be like, I can move my hand. You know, so those are the things where it's like, you know, I tried it. It works. And now, you know, there, there's one person that is understanding now yes. where before maybe they, you know, tried 10 different creams that the doctor recommended or something, but yet, whoa, this works. <laughs> the power so hearing of those stories, Yeah. Hearing those stories are always wonderful. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Wow. You're doing really amazing things. I'm I'm just really excited about that artisan box. I'm just going to be talking about that for days. What you're doing to help your local community is really amazing, which yeah. tells me that you've probably had a lot of amazing people in your life who've been an example for you. Who inspires you? So <laughs> I'm laughing because I got to tell you a story. I was thinking about that question. I can come up with a hundred reasons with my wife. She's phenomenal. She you know, during my worst time, she's, you know, helping figure this out, how to work this out. Um, same thing with my parents, my mom, my dad, I, you know, but as I'm thinking of this question, Wiley Coyote pops into my head. I kind of chuckled myself because I'm like, what? And I remember a story that I heard or read something, I don't even remember where we need to really strive to be like Wiley Coyote because as much as everybody else knows he's never getting Roadrunner, he doesn't give up. Mm -hmm. He knows what he wants, no matter how many failures, he's not giving up. So that, would, so that was kind of like, yeah, that really makes a lot of sense right now. So yeah. <laughs>
I love that. Have you had a, have you had an answer like that before? <laughs> I haven't, but I'm not surprised that it's Wiley e. Coyote. My my father in law that was his favorite. That was his favorite yeah. Looney Tunes character, and I think yeah. for the my same wife reason. says you're I think for the same reason. Yeah. yeah, my wife says you're aging yourself now. You're I still like grew up on Looney Tunes. You're in good company. You're in good company. <laughs> Most of us aromatherapists are in our 20s right now. So, you know, oh, yeah. that's awesome. No, that's awesome. I love that. I really do. And now I'm going to be thinking about Wiley Coyote and maple syrup for the rest of the day. And <laughs> um, I'm curious, what is one aromatherapy concept that you think people are still struggling to understand. And the reason I asked the question, I wasn't planning to, but because you go to these shows, because you set up a booth, because you talk to the people, you're right there face-to-face -face, hearing from them. What is the constant question that you, that you get? I, the biggest thing that people don't understand that I feel is a little bit goes a long way. Mm. That is the biggest thing that people are like, you know, oh, I just take the oil and I put 10 drops and I put it all over myself. And it's like, no, one drop on a necklace will last two to three days. And they're like, what? One, one drop? Oh, no, I go, I, I, I got to use more than that. I'm like, no, you don't. Right. Um, so they almost think the more I use, the better it's going to work. But that's not the case with aromatherapy. And that's, I think that's the hardest thing that people don't quite understand. Right. Well, and in our society, more is, more is better. Everything's bigger in Texas, right? The more, <laughs> you know, you, the more, the better. Um, yeah. But you're correct with aromatherapy. That's not the case. And I just, I think back, you know, I go back and I'm like, when our plants arrived on this planet, right. When the plants showed up, yeah, that was already designed that way. Look, right. you don't need much. Just show, just show up and be with the plants. That's what you need. Yeah. You don't need to tear them all out of the ground and, and use them all. Just, you know, right. a little bit here, a little bit there yeah. and you get what you need. Yeah. I, I make my tea now with one sprig of lavender. That's awesome. Stash makes a lovely lavender tea. If, if you're ever just looking to buy tea in a bag, I'm not a salesperson for stash. We just have stash in our home. Uh, <laughs> We, we have a couple um, lavender farms in our area. So every year I go during their pick season and yeah, that I dry it and have it for the. You're very lucky. That's, that's awesome. Uh, you know, we were in Texas for 20 years and there are lavender farms there, but Texas is pretty harsh as yeah. far as growing things. Um, so they were pretty. It's tough in this area really too. But yeah. It's tough in this area, but they do. They do good with it, That's but, it good. but it's hard work. It is, it is definitely not an easy plant right. to have in this area. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So as we um, come down to the end of our time, I always like to hand the floor over to my guest to share any final words or inspirations, or if there's something just heavy on your heart that you need to get out into the world, here's your shot. Dur especially during this time, you know, stress and anxiety is at an all time high. I want to say deal with, not deal with the stress, but deal with how to relieve the stress from you. Yeah. Um, you really need to concentrate on how to, you know, get the relief from stress. So instead of just ignoring it, you have to actually do something to figure it out. Yeah. Um, you know, that's where for me, it was, I physically had to take time off in order to figure that out. Um, and it could be different for other, for everybody. Um, but getting, getting that one thing that you can do to help relieve some of the stress is, is big. So. Thank you. So thank you so much, David. Um, I'm so glad we were able to reconnect after the yes. conference and do this episode. I, I just took long enough on my end. <laughs> well, you know, the, I'm a big believer in serendipity, providence, everything happens in the exact right time. And yeah. this was the exact right time for you and I yes. to get together. Um, yep. I don't stress over things like that. So, <laughs> <laughs> but no, I appreciate what you're doing in the world. And I love your heart for helping the people around you to continue yeah. thriving as well with the artisan box. 
and just working with the local community, trying to get yep. those art shows and everything going again. I just think that's beautiful. I love that. And I appreciate you so much and everything you do with AIA behind the scenes, because I know you're not like a guy out front, but you're in the background helping out, making yep. sure that that organization keeps running. You are very much appreciated in the aromatic community. Thank you for everything that you're doing. Thank you so much for having me. And thank you for everything you do. I mean, this is oh. great. <laughs> I just show up, you know, I just show up. Um, <laughs> no, that's but, what I did. did I? <laughs> oh, wait, okay, okay, we're both just showing up. And that's really what matters anyway, right? We're showing up, we're it doing is. the things that we love, and we're yeah. trying to impact the world for yeah. for beauty. And be there for each other. That's, that's, that's I think, is another big thing, is, you know, we're all in this together. Let's help each other out. Yeah, I know that's an overused phrase over the last few years, but it really is yeah. true. It really yeah. is true. Without connection, without community, we got nothing. Right. Right. Yeah. So I'm thankful you're a part of our aromatic community and everything you're doing in the world. You are so appreciated. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much. I wonder how many of my listeners resonate with David's story of being overworked. And as a result, your body is falling apart. A few years ago, I was working a great job. It was a job that I loved. But something shifted, and I began pouring into the job way too much. At the same time, my body decided to go through menopause, and anxiety began to rule most of my days. I started becoming depressed, and my body started shutting down. I tried just about everything I could think of, aromatherapy, acupuncture, chiropractic, antidepressants, counseling, you name it, I was doing it. During one of my acupuncture sessions, she called my hubs into her office while I was lying on the table, and she told him that if I didn't drastically change how I was doing life, that I probably wouldn't last much longer. Whoa. Wait just a second. I was wily coyoteing my life and going, 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 not giving up. How could this be? But my body decided that pushing, pushing, pushing was no longer serving me. Just like David, I had to make some major changes in my life. One of those changes, just like David, was walking away from the job and then figuring out how to reclaim my life, changing my diet and exercise program, having my service dog and aromatherapy were great starting points. But the thing that's made the biggest change was working with my own transformational coach. I have been able to rewire some of the outdated paths in my brain that no longer serve who I want to be. I've been able to reclaim my life and step into my power as a transformational coach for people living in that same space that both David and I found ourselves existing in. So if you find yourself in that same space, I encourage you to reach out. If you resonated with David's story and you want to see what his aromatherapy can do to help, you will definitely want to connect with him at the links in the show notes. If you're ready to say yes to transformational coaching, I would love to chat with you. I found David's vulnerability in sharing his story truly inspiring, and I love that artisan box that he's offering on his website. As a matter of fact, I think I need to get my hands on some of that maple syrup right now. Aromatic Chat is produced by Lemon Balm Coaching. You can connect with me, your master transformational coach and registered aromatherapist on the web at lemonbalmcoaching.com. I would love to read your review of Aromatic Chat. You can leave your five-star review on Apple Podcast or Podchaser or even at buymeacoffee.com slash aromatic chat. I want you to know I read every review that comes in and do a little happy dance when I hear how much you love the show. Your review makes it possible for new listeners to find the show and connect with the aromatherapist that meets their needs. I will see you next time with our next episode. Until then, peace, love, and aromatics.